being on top of a hill and having those visuals around you, is, it's just, it frees your mind a lot. Um, mechanically with horticulture of vines, it means that we have airflow from the ocean that comes across the top of the ridge. Um, the air also channels down through the gorge, so it keeps a gentle breeze flow, which helps with vine function. And then the arc of the summer sun just goes straight over our head, so we get bathed in bright light all, all day long up here. So. I just I like the idea of you know, having a rustic old barn on top of a hill. To get flavour, you have to be connected to the landscape. Um, but some people try too hard. <laughs> It comes very naturally for me. Um, being wild is, is where I find my big inspiration. But it, take, it takes years. I, I don't think you can just wake, make, wake up one day and, and make, make wine and, and then throw the rule book in the bin. Because you can't. Because you'll, you'll end up in a lot of trouble making doing that. You won't make great wine without studying enology. But the deconstruction of winemaking is the privilege of people who have made a lot of mistakes and, and worked quite a significant journey. And when chef de deconstructs, you know, the, the, the good ones have done years in kitchens in, in order to put the right tomato with the right olive oil, the right mozzarella, shazam. Um, I'm not a big fan of uh, rock star anti-establishment culture in winemaking. I've learned from great older winemakers. Some of them have passed, um, sadly. But I feel the craft is handed down through generations and there's a lot to learn from other people and how they've made wine. But I relate to, to more rugged natural winemaking. As you have to start with great vineyards, there's no question. Um, we have an expression here, you can't make strawberry jam out of pig shit. So you have to start with great grapes in order to, order to make extraordinarily good wine. So. The, the horticulture, the landscape is where it starts, but the interpretation is fascinating. People power, like I say. More importantly, the energy and the spirituality is really important to me. So biodynamics is about connecting to the spirituality. And I really observed a fair bit of that, in, funnily enough, in California and in Bordeaux. I was, I was actually, I had to slow down in order to understand how they were spiritually connecting to what they, what they do. Um, I've always observed the energy of the phases of the moon. If you don't, if you, if you haven't figured that much out, then you, you haven't connected to the land. The, the way the moon pulls the energy through the plant is, I've observed flavour increase on the phase of the full moon. Um, we all know it affects our moods, even though most of us deny it. We're not werewolves, but you, you'd be surprised how much the moon does affect us and our energy. But once you start tuning into what's around you, then you find detail. But when you have to come to the point of putting a composition together to inspire people's hearts, that is spiritually ex exhausting. Like it, we're, we're doing a lot of blending at the moment and um, I come home absolutely knackered just by, th by thinking about those little, the corners, little details are important. I embrace wines that have a little bit of animal in them. I, I like a wine to show more than fruit. I, I quite like the little bit of blemish that comes on an apple and I, at least I know it's grown he with health and it, it'll likely to have flavour. I'll eat my way around the worm. I don't mind the cheeky little mole on someone's face. So with wine, I like wine to show a little bit of that animal in the background. It shouldn't be led by animal and I like the nose to charm you. When you smell a wine, you close your eyes and you get that holy Nelly factor and it gives you a smile. <laughs> like, you just go, wow, that's good wine to me.